What was it like to get that call to be the nutritionist and a part of that super team and stuff like that? So what was it like to get that call? Like what were you expecting? You know, it wasn't it wasn't like one of those like you might think like oh you got the call and it's like alright it, 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 everything's a process. You know, we were going back and forth, kind of figuring out logistically how it was going to work, um, what what I would need for for the camp and what I expect, um, what they expect from from me. Um, it's much more of a working relationship, trying to figure things out and going going back and forth to to, to make make it work. What's the history there of you and Danny? Like how did he even know? Or like is, was he following you on Instagram and checking out all your omelets and stuff? Or you know, like Danny and I have been um, we've been on several cards together in, in the local area, um, and I think you know I don't think there's any secret. A lot of a lot of fighters notice when it comes to weigh-in time that I don't look like I'm dead. Yeah, always you know? shredded too. Right. Yeah, yeah, I'm always in good shape, and um, and I'm people see my, my my social media posts, and I'm eating and still making weight. So guys always ask me about that, and I think it's just it's just gotten around. So you fought the cream of the crop from 147, 140, everybody, Pacquiao, Spence. Who hit the hardest? Provanikov. Provanikov? Oh, yeah. He hit, like, significantly harder than Errol Spence? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, all right, Different. with that said, do you think you could have continued that fight? Or was um, how was the stoppage, in your opinion? Yeah, I, um, you know what it was? I, I, I fought him exactly the way that they wanted me to fight him, right in front of him. Um, I had a knee injury going into that fight, and during the fight it really exasperated, and I, I couldn't move the way I needed to. I thought that um, I'd be able to stand with him a little bit, and he was just stronger than I expected, honestly. Are you won't box at all while you're out there in Oakland? Absolutely. Camp? I, have, okay. I, mean, I, I, got, I, got, I train every day, so I have okay. to be out there um, getting some work in as well. Um, Bertle's probably going to be out there, so I guess... Yeah, it's pretty funny when they're talking about it. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. It's possible. But um, I've, um, I've actually also started back thinking around the idea of going back down to 140. Um, I'm undefeated there. I have my title there. I never lost my title at 40. Um, I had to relinquish it to go up to fight Pacquiao. And then I planned on going back down, but then the con fight came up. And I always wanted that fight. So when that name came up, I was like, I jumped at the opportunity. Um, and then I just kind of stayed there because of the opportunities. But um, I think... Truly, I'm, I'm more of a 140 pounder. I haven't weighed close to 147 on any of my fights. I'm always 45, 44, you know, so. Um, so maybe a possible you and Broner fight. A lot of great names in the 40, 47s. Um, you know, it's just, and it's it's always flipping and flopping, you know, in terms of who's where and what weight class you end up in, so. Let me get some of your uh, boxing knowledge on uh, some fights that are gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Do people make too much of a thing with Keith's body and the body shots? They say that's like, you know, his kryptonite. You know, we've seen him hurt by Sean Porter, we saw him hurt by Collazo, by the mm -hmm. body punches. Do you think that's the game plan that.